with that being said, the today's session is going to go uh, by quickly by covering a lot of Microsoft Teams stuff. We're going to do some PowerPoint slides, just give you a high level overview of what Microsoft Teams is compared to OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, and then talk high level before we get into an actual live demo where I will show you the tool and some of the features and tips and tricks. So what is really Microsoft Teams? You might have used it in the past, you might be new to it, and maybe you were thrown in the middle of uh, a team that is already using Microsoft Teams heavily. Microsoft Teams, and as Microsoft describes it, is a chat-based workspace because not only that you're collaborating with others, but your chat is basically the main feature of that tool. In the past, we've been always sharing documents, whether it's on a file share locally on-prem or if you use the cloud before. This one brings in more collaboration. You have your team. It's a hub for teamwork because you can add any team member within your organization. And not only that, like Tahir said, you can bring in people from outside your organization into your team. You can chat with them all in one place. It's secure because it follows the Microsoft security uh, uh, and as well as your tenant security and compliance. And it's very customizable. They built it in a way where you can uh, edit the site, you can add channels, you can modify it, and even bring in third-party apps into Microsoft Teams. It's a one place where you can access a lot of applications, whether they are Microsoft applications or external applications. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of these applications. So Microsoft has way too many, in my opinion, tools and services. Obviously, some people heavily use uh, a set of applications more than others, uh, but Teams is really kind of a placeholder for almost everything you see in, fr in front of you. And I'm not showing every Microsoft application that is part of the 365 suite. There's more, that, so there's some new applications they introduced. So with all of that, the majority of them, you can access them from Teams. And that's why it's a one-stop shop for all of these apps. On top of it, you can add the third-party apps. So what's the difference? I get this question a lot. It is confusing. And sometimes in my head, I say, oh, it makes sense. But for someone who's new to the Microsoft suite, it may all look the same. And in reality, or in the back end of things, they are the same. They're all using SharePoint as their back end. Every document that you save to Microsoft 365 is actually saved on SharePoint. But Microsoft displays the content to you in different ways, and the security behind it is different between the three tools that you have. So OneDrive as a start, and I think is the simplest one to understand, Whenever you get a Microsoft 365 account, by default, you have a OneDrive account. This is your personal drive. No one can see your content. By default, anything you add to OneDrive is private. However, you can change the permissions and access per document or folder on your OneDrive. There's not an option where you can select your OneDrive and share everything in it. It's usually one folder at a time or one document at a time. So I personally would work in OneDrive first on my documents. When it's ready to be shared with the team, I prefer to move it to a team site or SharePoint. And one thing I would say about OneDrive, and I know this is a team session, but just to keep in mind, OneDrive, because it's personal folder, if you leave the company that you're part of now, your data within 30 days will go away if your manager doesn't move that content. That's why if it's a team content and documents, make sure that you put it on one of the other two options that I'm going to talk about now, Teams and SharePoint. So with Microsoft Teams, this is the place where all of the team members are working and collaborating. So if you have a document you want to share with them, then you put it on Teams. This way, if you leave the company, they still have access to that team site. Teams don't get deleted unless the admins have uh, in the settings uh, an expiration date of an inactive team. So Teams is more of the collaboration place. It's used for small teams and projects. Let's say you have a project where you need to um, 
travel on site somewhere for a month and you want to plan it, then you cre can create a team site call, uh, call it the name of the trip and where you're going, and then add all the team members to it. SharePoint is more used for large scale organizations. Now it's uh, more towards, let's say if you have a finance department or HR department, they would create a SharePoint site, have a home page that has, it's almost like a website, but then all the documents that everyone in the organization needs to access or in that department, they put it on SharePoint. So that's the difference I would say between the three. Our focus today is on Microsoft Teams and we'll show you some of the features, permissions and settings that you can manage in Microsoft Teams. So how do you access it? There are two ways you can go from the web browser and go to teams.microsoft.com. I recommend that option for people who use shared devices and, and anyone that doesn't have a newer device uh, with a lot of memory on it because Teams application, the second option, could take up some space on your device and it's could slow it down if you don't have a newer device. And I'm just being straight and very honest with you, that's that's how I use it. If I'm using also a VDI, I tend to use uh, the web version. They're very, very similar. The, the differences are very minimal. So whatever works best for you, uh, you can use uh, as an option. And now we'll get into the demo. So I'll stop presenting the PowerPoint and switch over to my Edge browser so and my team so I can show you how to utilize it. All right, so let's share Microsoft Teams. All right, let me know when you can see it. Right, I we think we're it. good. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. this is the Microsoft Teams application, which is installed on my device, and I access it to collaborate with team members and chat with others and even access my calendar. I'm going to go over the view and how the structure is. Again, this is level 100, and I know a lot of you are familiar with it, but I will be throwing in some tips that you may not know about even the view. So for example, on the left-hand side, by default, this is what you'll see, activity, chat, teams, calendar, calls, and files. This is the default one, unless your organization decided to pin on the left-hand side different apps. If you don't use the calling feature in Teams, you can right-click and unpin it, and it will go away. If you prefer to reorganize the left-hand side, you can press and hold and move the files, let's say, to the top, because you utilize a lot of files, then you can do that. I've seen a lot of people put the chat first, Teams second and get rid of the rest because they don't really use them. I've already learned something. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. <laughs> See, it, a lot of, you might think I'm just going to tell you how teams look and all of us see the same thing, but really this is a unique thing and I like reorganizing them. And on top of it, if you have other applications you want to add, there's the three dots that you can open and search for any app. Uh, I think bo not box, uh, Dropbox, Box, any even third party apps, you might be able to find an ad here uh, yeah. as, as an app. As an example, we use a tool called Vacation Tracker for users to uh, submit PTO requests. And what's cool is there, of course, is just an integration because everyone wants to integrate with Microsoft 365. You just click those dots, add Vacation mm -hmm. Tracker and boom. Now, when our users need to submit requests, they don't need to go to a web browser. They don't need to go anywhere else. It's right here in their teams. And everything else we're finding can do the same thing. And it's not complicated. <laughs> like it's as simple as clicking the app and adding it to it. So yeah, just just big emphasis on that and how any company can use this to integrate within teams. Absolutely. And if you've attended the, our previous session about bookings, and shifts and all of that can also be added to Teams that way. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular that companies, like you said, Tahir, will add uh, or create an app in Teams. You can also create your own app by uh, using the app creator within Microsoft Teams. Now I'm going into level two, uh, <laughs> the advanced Teams, but that's also an option. They have a lot of documentations and information online where you can learn how to actually build your own app within Teams. Uh, but again, that's an advanced uh, one. We're not going to cover it. And then there's at the bottom the help section uh, where you can learn more. If you think my training was not enough or if you want to 
learn more about a specific topic, you'll find it here in the help section. And one of my favorite things about it is that what's new because it will tell me some of the new features because you may not notice it right away, but you'll know that they've added that in the month of January, February and so on and some of the features across platforms. So this is some of the uh, things that I try to read from time to time just to know what's new in Microsoft Teams. Uh, so that's the left hand section and I will get into each one of these in about five to ten minutes. But first, I want to go into the settings because a lot of us dive straight into Microsoft Teams and they start being added to Microsoft Teams sites. They are getting chat messages and we forget to really manage our settings and our, how do we do you want to use Teams? There's you can customize it. And at the beginning of this session, I said one of the nice things about Microsoft Teams is that you can actually customize things, whether it's the team site, but also your personal settings, you can manage them. So at the top right, you'll see your initials, your profile picture, whatever you have. This is the first thing I'm going to go into. And you can see where you can add your personal uh, account, which I have in here. And then I also have my saved content. So as we get into some of the other sections, I'll show you how you can save a message and you'll find it in here. It's a little bit, I don't like where they have it, to be honest here. Uh, it's not accessible as easy as I think because a lot of people don't look here to find it, but this is where it's out. You can manage your account and sign up. The three dots next to it, and you'll notice me see a three dots a lot because Microsoft loves the three dots. That's where they toss in a lot of additional features. So if you're looking for something that you would think Microsoft team has, look for the three dots and you'll find a lot more features. So in here we have a bunch of options, but I'll start with the settings. Uh, the settings, and there's so many here, I can't go through all of them, but I will highlight some of the important ones. At the first one, the general, you can change the theme from dark to default to uh, high contrast. I like it as is because people are used to it. Most people have it, but you can change it to the dark mode as well. The application launch settings, that's how I keep mine. Um, some organizations might ask you to disable GPU. It's based on the, the laptops they provide. Uh, I would say if you don't want it to run in the background or auto launch, then you can change them as a, the settings in here as well. Uh, one thing I've noticed a lot of people at the beginning of Teams complained about is the chat <laughs> because we're used to Skype and on Skype, when you double click on someone's name to chat with them, it will open a new window. So now they allow you to change that settings where if you want to start a new chat, it's always going to be in a new window. Uh, and then some language delegates is where you can manage them here. So if you have the calling feature and a license to be able to call externally, then and a phone number, you can manage delegates in here. Out of office is another option you can add directly in Teams. However, if you have Outlook as well, and if you add out of office in Outlook, it will uh, reflect here in Teams as well. Here's your accounts, privacy. This is my favorite feature, the do not disturb, because sometimes I get a lot of messages, but I'm focusing on work, so I want to put myself in do not disturb. However, if my manager wants to message me, I want to be able to still get those messages from my manager. So you can manage it and then add, let's see, this is my manager. I'll add him and I'm good to go now. If I get a message from him, then I'll still get pinged and it's going to pop up at the bottom of my screen, even though I'm on do not disturb. I hope you don't have to block any contact, but that's an option here. I guess if you're getting external messages, Tahir, you can block someone that way. Um, All right, sorry, Kayla, you're getting blocked. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and so it's is, there also, any way, is there any way to set do not disturb for just the manager? No, I'm just joking. I'm oh, sorry, just, just a bad joke. <laughs> you can, I thought about it for a second if there's a way to do that, but that would be the block, or I'll show you in a second how you can mute that manager, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so another thing I want to talk about is red receipts. So by default, this is enabled, which means if you send someone a message or you receive a message from them, they will know that you read that message. Uh, if you don't want to know, you don't want to see it, you can turn it off. But by default, this is enabled. 
uh, and people will be able to see when you read their message. All right, uh, other things that you can look at, notifications. This is very personal, so I'll let you guys deal with it. Uh, if you click on the edit of any of the settings option, you can change it to be banner, pop up, only in your feed, or completely turn it off. This is up to you. But you can also manage notifications per chat and per Teams, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But this is the you know high level uh, settings for your notifications. This one is kind of cool where if you missed a message and you never replied or you didn't read it, you will get emailed. Uh, some people like to be on email more than Teams still, so that's an option where you can get an email. Manage your devices here and you can check your audio. I don't want to click on it because it might turn off my camera. Uh, app permissions, the apps that you've added, if you want to remove it from your Teams, um, then you can do that. And that usually, if you find your teams to be slow, that's one thing that you can go in and manage and remove some of those apps. Accessibility options, captions are available as well. I like this one, files. Uh, this is newer, I would say, newish feature because in this section, you'll notice that you can change where the files are automatically downloaded. In Teams right now, uh, by default, if you click download on a file that someone sends you, it will always just quickly download it and put it in your downloads folder. This now allows you to change the location and it allows you to say, ask me before you download the document. That wasn't a feature for a good four to five years on Teams, which was pretty annoying, but now they allowed it, which is great. And I recommend that you at least check this box because by default, it's not checked. Uh, and file open preference. Uh, if you have the right license that allows you to edit documents in the desktop app, I would change it to desktop app here. This way, when you launch an Excel document that is on a team site, it will launch it in the desktop app. Okay. Otherwise, is, if you don't have it, go to Teams. Go ahead. That's a that's a really good feature because it it honestly drives me crazy when I have to edit a document in Teams because it takes a while to open up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it is once it's open, it's fine. But it'd be way better if I could just get to the file quickly without mm -hmm. having to go into the SharePoint and find the site or whatever. It could just open on the desktop app. That's that's a really good feature that I think you know everyone listening that might be a default setting you want to do rather than opening in Teams because you're going to get potentially frustrated with Teams because you're going to be working files a lot in Teams the more you use it. It just becomes the central you know, file manager. But what's good, and Kamal will cover, is all those things are actually saved in SharePoint. It's not only in Teams. Um, so anyway, yeah. thanks Kamal. Yeah, of course. This is definitely by default, it says Teams. So, um, and we, I said that at the beginning, Teams can really hog your memory. It could be heavy on some laptops. And um, when you open a, a, a document inside, that could be an, a good option to keep it as Teams because you don't want to launch another application. But at the same time, you want to test what's better. Is it better to launch it separately? Is it better for your computer that way? Or is it better to keep it to Teams or even browser? This will launch the document in the browser. And that could be an option if you have an F3 license, which doesn't allow desktop applications. Then if you select browser, at least when you open a document, it's not opening it in Teams. It's going to edge and launching uh, that same document in the browser. Calling, you can manage some of your calling features in here. Phone number, I I'm not going to go too into, de into details about calling, but that's where you can manage forwarding, ringtones, voice mess mail uh, in here as well. <clears throat> well, I hope this was helpful. We I like to go into settings first because we always forget about it and don't end up actually uh, managing our settings at all for the longest time. And it could make slight changes, save you some time, make it easier to utilize Teams. So now I'll get into some of the tabs. Briefly, I'll talk about activity. Activity is your notification hub, basically. Anyone that sends you a message uh, and you haven't read it yet, you can see it there. If you have a lot of, if you're a member of a lot of Teams, then anytime someone posts a message, it will show up here as a notification. 
you will be notified in red in a different color based on what the message is and if you are tagged in it or not. I like that they added this unread only feature because sometimes it could get too much and then if you do this, it will tell you, well, this message you haven't read before or uh, such, and then you can search and filter as well based on uh, the message. Again, three dots. Right next to the filter, you can filter to the messages that you've been mentioned in, replies, reactions, missed calls, voice messages, and apps. So that's the first tab normally for most people. And then the second one is the chat. The chat is where you find all of the conversations that you have with others, whether it's external, internal, or guests. Keep in mind, you may not be able to chat with external if your tenant admin disabled that. There is a settings that admins need to be to enable to allow uh, users to chat with someone external. If you have your own license, it's by default enabled, and you can chat with anyone that also enables external chat. Any Teams meeting or webinars that you're part of, the chat for that meeting will also show up in that location as well. So you can see this is the meeting, all the attendees, the chats from the attendees, as well as some of the settings you can find here in this um, section. There you go. And I can react to it. Thumbs up. Let's keep going. And you can see that this is recorded. At the end of the training or webinar, you will see the recording pop up here. Similarly, we've done a forms and booking training. I was presenting it, and I can find that recording in here, download it, save it, open it directly from that chat. So Teams chat section is not only for one-on-one -on -one chat or group chats, but it's also for your meeting chats will show up in here. So will everybody automatically get the recording when this ends in their chat, or is it just for presenters? Oh, for webinars, I'm not entirely sure if attendees okay. will see it. So okay. I mean, either way, we, we can... send it out, but that would be kind of convenient. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's probably just the, at the presenters, but okay. uh, that's probably a good thing because yeah, you know, yeah. All right, cool. Because there's too much fluff in the beginning or end or anything, I can cut it out and edit before sending out. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, of course. And then they added a new feature, which is our own space. This is came because Slack uh, had that feature, and Slack would, uh, if you've used Slack, it's something similar to Microsoft Teams. And one of their main features and selling points was that you can chat with yourself. You had your own space where you can send messages, add files, do whatever you want to remind yourself of things sometimes, or to test how a message is gonna go out before sending it. This is your own space. It's just for you, no one can see it, you're just chatting with yourself basically. But I like that you can test some of the messages before sending them out. And on top, you can even see how you would be viewed by others in terms of the organization, your LinkedIn, if that's enable activity and files. To start a new chat, you simply either, there's, there's shortcuts all over Teams. You can do the control N and you can learn about all the shortcuts from here, key, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, but you can start a new chat, and by default, mine will start inside the application. But I can always, uh, once I start that chat, I can pop it out using the pop out chat button. And now it will be its own chat, just like back in the days on Skype. You type in anyone's name, and you can start the conversation, internal, external, whatever you prefer. If you want to add multiple people to the conversation, then you can search for their name and add uh, multiple users to it. Well, I added myself, but if I have someone else, you can do that. Our admin, I have an admin here. This is a test tenant, and that's one of the reasons that I don't have a lot of chats and conversation, but this is uh, how you can create a group chat. And hello, all, and they will get my message as a group chat. You want to add someone to a group conversation just click on the attendees here and add people and when you add them it will give you the option to include the history of let's say one day if you don't want them to see uh, an older conversation but you can also include all the chat history or not uh, 
in Tahir, you mentioned how do you do do not disturb on one person and only one person. Well, there's the mute uh, feature, and that's also in the more options three dots that Microsoft loves is the three dots. And you can, uh, well, I can't mute myself, obviously, but you can mute any other conversation. You can even hide it so it's not showing up in your feed muted uh, you can notify when available this one when that person goes online it, you'll get a pop-up just like if you received a message that says this person is now available uh, or their status changed so that is also a cool feature if you are looking to chat with someone but you're waiting for them to to be online they will not be notified that you are using that feature You can add favorite contact, pin them. Pinning is pretty cool because once you get to a stage where you have way too many chats and people talking to you, you want to pin the folks that you always chat with them rather than starting a new conversation. You want to be able to just find them quickly. So that's one option. Another cool feature I find is the search bar on top. We'll get more into the search bar, but related to chat, you can use something called shortcuts in the search bar. So if you select it, it's if you read on top, it says look for messages, files and more, but also type forward slash for a list of commands. So one of the ones I use is forward slash and then you can type, let's say you can pop the chat, but you can type the chat and then the name of the person and then the message you want to send. So this is a cool feature if you are already in, let's say, doing something different. Uh, you're on a team site, you are in a call, you don't want to exit or a webinar like this. You can go to the chat, type in that person's name, admin, hello there, and you can see that message got sent. You can also use that forward slash feature to do a lot more things. You want to be on do not disturb quickly, DND your status will change. Another thing I like is the pop, forward slash pop. This will pop out a chat into a new window of anyone that you have. So if I want to talk to uh, this external person that I have messages from, then voila, it's popped out. So that's about it on chat you can also do some filtering and search by name and search even the content there's a lot of features here but uh, because we don't have a lot of time i'm going to go into the next section uh, and cover teams now teams is the main section of microsoft teams obviously from the name you can tell but also teams means this is where you're actually collaborating with folks on projects, on whether it's chat, projects, announcements, sharing files, connecting app, uh, third party apps, calendars, all will be in this location. As a start, if you've not used Teams in the past, there's the join or create a team at the bottom left, and this allows you to create a new teams and add members to it. Uh, this is the create team option. If someone had already created a team and they, you want to join it, there might be a code that you can join uh, or you can search for a public team in your tenant and join it. But the create team feature has now changed slightly. Um, I would say it's been two to three years that they changed it, but they give you templates to make it easier to get started. You can start from scratch, just create a team with one channel, or you can create it using one of the templates that they have. So it depends on what kind of work you're trying to do. So if you are managing devices and doing some IT support, then there's the organized help desk. If you're working on incidents, then you do incident tracker, onboarding employees, adopt, manage events and projects. There are a lot of options. I'll also tell you there are organizations that disable this feature. If you don't see it, it's probably your admin that disabled it. And there are organizations that actually add their own templates to it. So you might see something uh, that I don't have. That's probably your admins created it and they want you to use. I'm not going to create a new one because it does take about five to 10 minutes to create a new site. So earlier I created a site 
that is actually um, an event. I use the event template, which is manage an event. This is the one I, I used. But if you also want to view what it's going to look like before creating it, you can select, let's say, manage project. And it's going to tell you this will create four channels and add nine apps. And then if you click on next, you can select private or public. Give it a name, customize it if you want, and then create. This is just customizing the name. I hope this makes sense. Now I'll go to my actual site there. I created the all hands meeting. In this section, you can also actually there's a couple of cool things. If you have a lot of team sites, click on the magic three dots again, and you can hide it. And this way it's going to show up in hidden teams. This is something I use when I end a project or I'm no longer on a project or I'm no longer helping that team. Then I don't want to see it. So I hide that uh, team site. However, if someone tags you by name and they at mention you in one of those team sites, you'll still see it in the activity section. So keep that in mind. You're, it's not completely hidden. You can always go back to it and be notified. Another option you can do is put it back by clicking on show, and now it's going to show up in your Teams uh, section. Other things from the three dots you can do. Let's talk about this. There's a lot. <laughs> you can start by, uh, let's go to the all hands meeting because that's the one I'm going to use today. Besides hiding it, you can, this is where you can manage the team, add channels, members, and so on. The first thing when I create a team is I want to manage it. I want to make sure that I'm setting it up at the beginning the way I want it to be, and I'm not changing settings halfway through. And the reason I say that is because not only you're adding members in this section and all, but there's the settings where you can add a profile picture to the team, member permissions. Do you want to allow them to do everything like by default, or do you want to manage it by saying, I don't want anyone to be able to, to add an app, remove an app, because I'm the one, I'm the admin, I'm managing it. So you can uncheck some of those boxes and create your own permissions that way. If you have guests, you can also uh, manage the guest permissions from here, the mentions. This one is very, very important if you have a large team. The larger the team gets, the more you want to utilize the sets. I've seen teams with a couple hundred people, and then this is enabled. What that means is if I go and at mention the name of the channel, then 200 people are notified. You don't want to allow that unless you are the admin. So when you uncheck those boxes, only admins will be able to do the at mentions. Because everyone will be notified if you keep this on. <clears throat> team code, if you want to share the team externally, use a code, you can do that. Fun stuff for Honestly, a lot of tenants have this to strict by default, um, but if it's not, I would keep it to moderate. It's not too, uh, you know, it's fine. It doesn't have any content that is uh, unacceptable, I say, with, for work location. So um, I keep it that way. You can turn Giphy's off, but I don't know why you would do that. They're really fun, actually, and I use them a lot. Uh, tax is the last section I'll go over in the whole settings area, but this one you can create your own tags and you can use them to uh, send messages to people. Uh, so this one you have tags for team owners, team owners and members, and you can also use it, I guess, here for shifts. I've not seen that before, but that's where you can use it as well. All right, so this is in terms of the settings. Um, the tags that you manage actually can be created from that last tab. So when you create a tag, you can say, if you have, let's say, 100 team members, but only 10 of them are uh, leadership. So you can call it leadership and add members from that team that has 100 people in it as part of the leadership tag. And then you can use it to mention only these 10 people when you send a message rather than mentioning everyone or one by one. I can add myself and I can add, let's say, someone else from the team. Then created. Now, when I use leadership tag in the chat message, then it's only going to notify these two. Now, let's get into channels. Uh, 
by default, because I used a template, it created a bunch of channels for me. A channel is basically, you have the team. The team is the name of your team site. In this case, is all hands meeting. But underneath each team, you will by default have the general channel. This is when you, let's say you have a house. The all hands meeting, the team site is your house. The key to it, to the house is basically the admin who will add members to that team. So now you enter that house. The general is that common space that you walk in into. You can't remove it. You can't delete it. It's always there. Anyone that gets into this team site, anyone that walks into your house will always walk into one place, which is the common space when you first enter a house. This is the same concept. The general is there by default. You cannot remove it. You can't rename it. It's there for any team site. However, you can add channels. Think of channels are other rooms that you have. So if you have a house with three bedrooms, it's like having a team site with three channels outside the general. But each channel, you can also change the permissions on it. You can either have a private channel, you can have a public channel, uh, when I say public, public to your team, and you can have a shared channel. So there are three options for a channel. So if I click on add a channel, you will see those three options. Standard is basically anyone that is already added to the team site will see it. This is basic. This is the kitchen. When you walk into a house, you have the living room. That's the general space. But then if you create a standard channel, that's like the kitchen. Anyone can walk into it. There's no door, there's no lock. The private is a more private space. There's a door and there's a lock. Only people with the key can get in. So a private channel, basically, you have to give permissions to specific members of that team. And then the last option is shared. This is a newer feature. This allows you to create that channel and invite people from outside the team, and you can share it across multiple team sites. So when you select that one, and after you create it, it will allow you to make sure that channel is visible for other teams. So instead of creating another team, if you want to combine uh, members from the finance team and the HR team, instead of creating a third team that says finance and HR collaboration, you can create this shared channel and then make sure that it's visible for both teams. Now, how do you do that? This is an example. All company files is a shared channel. So when you click on it, you can manage it and add it and uh, share the channel actually with people team. So if I click with a team, then I can search the all and actually I have to select the other option. Share with your own and then I can select the all hands meeting and share it with them. So now this channel will also show up here in my all hands meetings. Taking a minute to show up, but eventually will show up and people who are part of the all hands meeting will also be able to see the all company files channel. Here you go, all company files. It's pretty cool new feature. Uh, we got to a point it's becoming ridiculous how many teams we have. So I think this is something I like to show people because I would recommend it and I think it would benefit from if you're an admin, you'll appreciate it because you have, you know, people are doing it that way. They're connecting instead of creating three other team sites, but also it benefits the team itself because you'll be able to um, share things uh, differently. Uh, in each channel, you have the option to start a new conversation. I'll use this one specifically to also show you how it works. So the first thing I want to say, you can send a message, hello, how's everyone doing? But you can also use this button, the first one, the A, to format the message. You can add a header to the message. You can add your content. You can enter as much as you want and add space. It's more like an email. Uh, and you can use all the settings you have in here. The ad mentioned that I created the tab. I can also use it to mention the whole team, but you can also mention one person at a time. If I want to mention this person, I can also mention. Send. Now those people will be notified and tagged, and they can reply to the message. They could save it. 
there are a lot of options that they can follow. Even reactions are options here. Now, the, the every channel has tabs in it. So there's the, well, before we get into tabs, I'll show you that with this option, the shared channel, you'll see that both teams, the customer team, the all hands meeting team, they will see that message. Uh, so each channel has files. Because I use the template, a lot of these channels that were created are customized and they already have a bunch of tabs in them outside just the files tab. So this one has planning ideas tab and it has the milestones as well. The general tab has a bunch of things, content scheduler, a lot of tabs that were added. These are the apps that we talk about you can add. You can add more tabs as well by clicking on the plus sign, searching for a tab and adding that application to it. So if you want to create a survey, you can add a form and you can select one of your existing forms or you can create a new form that will be displayed for all the members of that teams. You can have them take it directly from that tab or you can send them somewhere else to uh, take that survey. And the most important tab of all is the files one. This is where you can find your content documents and uh, edit them even directly from the team channel. Uh, this option, the first thing I'll say, it's built on SharePoint, like I said. So if you click on the three dots, sometimes it depends how big your screen is, might show up open in SharePoint, and this will take you to the browser if you want to see all your files from the browser directly but you can also continue editing and managing your files directly from Teams. There are a lot of options on top. You should look at things like share. You can share a specific, if I create now a Word document and call it budget tracker, and I wanna share it with someone that is not part of my team, then I can simply select that file and click on share and identify anyone internal or external to see that document. They will only be able to see that document. They're not going to see anything else, none of the channels, none of the members of the channels or anything else. You can share a folder as well. Uh, there are a lot of other options. It's hard to go through all of them, but if you want to manage how and reorganize your team, you can move and copy stuff, uh, delete, pin to the top. If you pin it, it's going to show up in a kind of an ugly way, but here on top where you can always access it. I'm going to go ahead and unpin now. Unpin. So there, there are a bunch of options in here. Uh, the, one of the coolest things is that you can actually edit directly in Microsoft Teams. So this is the document I just created, and I'm able to go in and say uh, budget tracker, you can use the same kind of settings that you have in Word. They're not, you're not going to see all the features, but you'll see the majority of them. You can rename it here. You can look at the version history. So if you made the change that you don't like, you can always roll it back directly from Teams. Once you start editing and you're done, you can share it with others from here. You can edit. Uh, in the desktop, if you already have the desktop application, then click on editing and open it in desktop app. This could be because you couldn't find all the settings that you want in Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, or you just want to see it in a different view, uh, then you can select that and launch it. Adding a comment is also pretty cool. You can highlight something, create a new comment, and add mention another team member and say, hey, um, let's say this guy, one's part of this team yet. So Jamal, I want you, can you review this part? I assign it as a task and I send it. Now Jamal is going to have one receive an email, be notified in Teams that they have a task assigned to them and someone mentioned them in a comment. And it's going to stay there until I will, I come in, that person comes in and they resolve the task or reply to it. This is more Office Online features, so it's across not only Teams, even if you go to Word Online or Excel, you'll find those same feature. All right, so I'm not going to bore you with the details of that because it's more common and uh, across. But now if you edited this document and you want to share it with the rest of the team, you can go back to posts and say, well, 
can the whole team review this document? You can use this attach button in your chat uh, and then select a recent file and then it should show you that most recent file that you worked on and share a link. Now, anyone in your team who comes to this chat, general chat, they will see that this message was sent Then the team review, please. They just simply click on it and start editing. Another thing you can do is uh, start a meeting within a team. Uh, this way, the information and who attended the meeting will be saved into that channel. And when you schedule a meeting directly from a channel, the notes will also be saved in the file section of that channel. I know we're low on time, so I'll go into the other sections that we have. The files is pretty cool because this is where you can see not only your recent and Microsoft Teams files, but you can see what you've downloaded recently and also your OneDrive content. So you can quickly access OneDrive and even add other cloud storages from here. So you don't have to go somewhere else to see your OneDrive content. You can actually view it from Teams. Calendar syncs with your Outlook calendar. So if you have any events that you want to see and even attend meetings, you can do it directly from here. You can create a new meeting, you can create a new event. And one of the things you can do from here is if, uh, and some people don't see it, is the drop down next to the new meeting. This one allows you to create a new meeting, but also a webinar. A webinar is what we have right now uh, where you could manage uh, when people are admitted into the meeting, who the presenters are, everyone by default is muted and their cameras off unless you change that settings directly from the event. Uh, it allows you to also, let me click on it actually to show you more. You can add uh, the sign up document where they have to fill out a form uh, to actually get the meeting invite to that session. This is by default my organization, but I can make it a public webinar as well. Once it's all created, it will allow you to add presenter bios, a theme for the event, and do registration form as well. It's actually not showing the registration form when you did that. Uh, what is it? It wasn't showing the registration form when you clicked webinar. It still shows your calendar. Oh, OK, sorry. Okay. No, no uh, problem. So uh, I think because it's opened another tab, and it's um, I would have to reshare to show it. Yeah, it's it's super simple for those listening interested in doing webinars through Teams. It's super simple. Like that's why I like to use it. Every now and then we do run into where some people can't get to the registration page. So they have to like go in incognito or try a different um, browser, which is a little odd. I don't know why it does that. I tried to find support docs from Microsoft and there really wasn't much. But I mean, overall, it doesn't seem to we don't seem to have any issues with it. But because of that one error, if it happens again, we may have to go to a different webinar platform uh, other than Teams, because obviously Teams sole purpose isn't webinar. It's just a nice feature that it has. Uh, but overall, we've been happy with it, and that's what we're you know using today, obviously. The other thing too on the webinar teams is it shows everybody that attends, which is great in a webinar like this when you know 30 people here, but sometimes you do a webinar and there's only like you know four or five people. So that's the only thing that I wish Microsoft had an option to hide. <laughs> so you know, so attendees aren't like, oh wow, like no one's here. But obviously in this situation it's fine. But um, that's one nuance that they haven't quite picked up on yet. Yeah, I think it's uh, a feature that was kind of rushed in Microsoft Teams, but they're still improving it. And I would say probably by the next time we have one of those sessions, they would have fixed some of those bugs and improved it. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's some odd things happening with the webinars. Yeah. Well, Kamal, what did you need to cover? Any other things on the training today, or can we move to I questions? I would say the last thing is the okay. calling feature that is based on the license that you have. If you have a calling license, then you will see a dial pad in here and you'll be able to call anyone externally into, to their phone number. But if not, you don't have that license, you can still search for anyone in your tenant, create your own you know, calling uh, section if you do a lot of internal calls and uh, talk to folks that way. Awesome.